Intermediate instruments are honestly the way to go if you're just starting out and you're wanting to take it more seriously. There's tons of advantages and I want to show you one of those in the SAS 411. Stick around. Hi, I'm Jason. And I'm Andrew, and we are here at Alamo Music. Please remember to visit us at alamomusic.com where we're gonna have all of these instruments available for you. Also, please leave a comment, let us know what you think. I would love to hear any kind of saxophone that you've been playing up to this point. Maybe it's time to jump up. And to that instrument, I'm thinking, the SAS 411C in particular, this is the one I have. This is the brass and copper version with a different lacquering. Um, I figured this would be a good instrument example to talk about lacquer finishes when it comes to it. And then the intermediate, uh, whole intermediate thing in general. Um, what's your feelings on intermediate instruments? Well, they're not beginner horns. Um, so there's probably some advantages I'm sure in terms of the upper and lower tessitura. There's your $10 word for the day. <laughs> Leave a comment with a definition of tessitura. <laughs> if there's three answers, you win. Um, well, yeah, and the cool thing, it's, it's so obviously you got the three levels, right? Uh -huh. It's usually four, but you got the three levels. You got your students, you got your intermediates, and you got your professional. It's the in-between, right? Who, who is the intermediate for, uh, what'd you say? Um, somebody who's, Practicing, yeah, you know, for to, you know, I don't mean to sound flippant, but yeah, somebody who's taken their their instrument seriously and mm -hmm. put it on their face for a couple hours a day. Exactly, yeah, if, especially students, right? I mean, yeah. the the people that are going to be put in the effort, they want to get better, they want to do that, but there are some walls that you can hit when it comes to student level instruments, and in particular with a saxophone, there are going to be some challenges when it comes to key action, when it comes to intonation, when it comes to just bl uh, blowing in general and everything like that into the instrument, the amount of air you can put into the instrument, how much output you can get in correlation with that air. Well, student models are, are built to not break when, you know, taking abuse sixth grade style. Exactly. And make a resonant sound. Yes. So That's once totally. you're past the I'm not going to destroy this thing phase, <laughs> then yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. And so now we're now you're at the point and congratulations, you decided to take it seriously, right? Yes. Um, we're going to be putting in the time and everything. So it means that you need a tool that's going to reflect that effort. Um, and here's the thing, professional instruments, Love them, right? I play on one, you play on one, we all play on one. But the problem is, is that those tend to be very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to be something that you're not really going to have as accessible as a, uh, a student model. Uh, rentals are super useful because that means that you as a parent or you as like say a college student or anything like that, like you're doing like community bands and stuff like that, right? If that was the case, Rentals are super useful because it's not upfront investment. And that's, an, and that's an issue for a lot of people. Right. Intermediates are that beautiful in-between where you get to have an instrument that not only plays well, but acts like a professional. So in terms of saxophone, the in-between the student and model and the professional, and this is kind of like my layman way of saying it, is going to be, without going into super huge details now, is going to be, this has the body of a really good student model with the parts of a dang good professional. Uh, the action on these instruments are gonna be a lot better in general. The uh, finish and everything is usually gonna be some kind of a unique finish. Uh, the neck itself is gonna be professionally made. Uh, when it comes to saxophone, like for instance, with this SAS 411, let's start talking about that now, it's gonna be, you have a professionally made uh, neck, you have a rib to post construction, so you're gonna get a lot of energy in through the horn that's not gonna be dissipated anywhere. A hand hammered bell, um, the instrument also boasts an incredibly large amount of, ergonomically, it's very handy. Um, I'm a huge f fan of just the, the idea that you can just place your hand on it, you know, do the whole zombie hand thing. Super natural, super easy, and it comes down, goes down the horn real, real plain like. Um, the other thing I like about this part in particular is going to be on the low end. The C key, it's going to be have a bit of a larger uh, key right there. So if you kind of have larger hands, this is actually super useful in my opinion. Um, but yeah, no, this is just a really pretty horn. And it's got this beautiful copper finish. Uh, the copper finish and everything like that. As always, I do want to imply a lot of your sound is going to come from the person. 
right? As with any horn. Okay. Uh, when it comes down to it, this instrument is not going to do a lot as far as your sound, your intonation, uh, not your intonation, but your sound, your air quality, and all that kind of stuff. But what this is going to do is facilitate those needs if you're taking it more seriously. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to like uh, finishes and everything like that, well, what do you think, like, what, when it comes to, like, let's say, like, a brass finish and everything, what, what does that do per, compared to, like, a silver finish? Um, well, again, as you said, it, it, it's really about the player. Mm -hmm. um, there are very, very subtle differences, I think, between, like, a, a, silver, a silver finish and a, and a, and a more, more lacquer finish. Um, these days, it seems like there's a lot more variety. You see a lot more red brasses. You see a lot more copper finishes. Um, for the most part, I would say a lot of that is just aesthetics. Um, I've never taken the, the Pepsi challenge with trying to discern the difference between the same model instrument, right, and one's a lacquer and one's silver. Mm -hmm. I might be able to do that, but it, it really does have a lot to do with the player. Yes, absolutely. It, is, it's, it can be a huge psychological thing. Right. Um, and the reason, the reason I ask that and stuff is because I, I view it the same way. When it comes down to it, the lack of finish and everything like that is going to have, what's going to come out is what you're feeling. Especially when you start doing it for a long time. You start right. doing really working on your breathing, your output of air over how much and everything. Make the pinwheel go, man. Just make it spin out of control. The whole idea is when you see like a brighter saxophone in my eyes, you get a brighter tone. If you see like a darker thing, you're gonna get a better tone that way too in that different direction. The cool thing about this brass is that it has such a nice, almost antique-esque finish to it that that, that aesthetic, and the, it's full brass too. You don't get a single idea of any kind of like nickel plating or any kind of, uh, any kind of like silver anywhere. It's fully brass, so it has this really nice aesthetic build to it. Um, you got the flower prints and everything, you got your classic Selmer, um, but you get this kind of very, I, I'm gonna say like classical vibe out of it. This is a, I think this is a really good instrument for that, and what facilitates that even further is just the playability of the instrument in general. Uh, we'll go over some, uh, we're gonna do some play testing and stuff like that, I hope you enjoy it, um, but I'm gonna show just how great this thing plays. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Well, thank you so much for listening. Uh, again, I just want to go over the ergonomics on this thing are great. I really enjoy playing down on it. Uh, the pearls on it protrude a little bit, I think, uh, but as far as the hand and everything, as far as hand placement, I really enjoy that. It very much feels like a Mark VI kind of in that, in that way. Uh, a bit bigger keys on the bottom end, uh, most of the, everything on the sides and everything, the palm keys, uh, your side B flat, your C and your E are great placing and everything for that. I, it's just an enjoyable horn. Um, as far as anything else goes, I say pick it up if you're going to be going into, say if you're like really taking it seriously, this is definitely something worth investing into if you wanted to like, you know, do your regional competitions and everything like that. If you wanted to uh, maybe choose a style of uh, music that you want to play and stuff that your instrument might be getting in the way for, um, this will definitely facilitate the idea that you can play any kind of challenging music you want to play or get into it and that works out great too. Um, as far as anything else goes, please, again, leave a comment. Uh, I would love to hear, know what you think about the sound and everything. I'd love what you think about the instrument itself. Have you ever played on an intermediate instrument? If you do, I would love to know what you play on. Um, but yeah. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.